Hey guys, thank you for joining me for another video on Microsoft Entry ID. In this video, we're going to go through different authentic authentication methods available in Entry ID. Let's get started. Before we look at each method, it is important to understand the security profile of different authentication methods. In this graphic, as you can see on the left hand side, we have examples of, uh, bad, of bad passwords. Then we have a stronger or better authentication method, which is a password and SMS or voice, which used to be standard MFA authentication, and many organizations still use it. Then we have an example of a better security profile for authentication. We have password and authenticator push notifications. In this example, Microsoft Authenticator. Then we have software tokens. OTP, which are other authenticator apps such as Google Authenticator, Authy, and many more. Then we have example of hardware tokens, which look like USBs, and they have a six-digit code displayed on them that changes every 30 seconds or so. And then we have an example of a very strong um, security profile for authentication, which is passwordless. This example here, we have Microsoft Authenticator, font signing, which we'll discuss later, Windows Hello, FIDO security keys, which are hardware devices, and certificates. Now that we understand which security, me which authentication methods are more recommended, let's go to each one here in the Entra ID. If we click on the first one, pass key, we can see that PASC is phishing resistant and the, the passwordless authentication methods available from many vendors. Here on this screen, we can enable it for all users or certain groups within our organization. We'll set it up to all users for now. And then if we click on figure, there are a few more settings we can set up. The interesting thing is that Microsoft Authenticator will also be considered as a, as a passkey or, or FIDO method. This is currently in preview, but it's coming up for release, general liability release very shortly. Another example of a passkey is a YubiKey, which is a hardware, hardware passwordless authentication method. If we go back to Entra, we can look at all the other methods. I'm not going to go through the setup because there'll be of each method because they'll be too time consuming in this video, but that will create dedicated videos for some of how to set up some of these methods, such as passkey or temporary access pass. Let's have a look now at the Microsoft Authenticator. Again, we can enable and target certain groups, but we're more interested in the configuration. So if we look at configuration, we can enable either a push notification on the phone which, as you, as you saw here, is one of the better security authentication methods. Or we can also use an enable OTP token, which is a um, which is a six-digit six-digit um, code on the Microsoft Authenticator app. So if you click yes, users will either be able to use a six-digit uh, code from their app, or they'll also be able to use the push notification method. Just to go clarify, um, just to expand on that, if you look at the authenticator option here, the differences between the push notification and the phone sign. So the push notification is simply comes on your, it shows up on your phone, you have approve or deny signing, while the passwordless option, it still happens within the authenticator, but when you're going through the sign-in flow, through your Microsoft tenant, you simply enter your email and then you get a notification on your phone on your Microsoft Authenticator app and you have to match the number of the screen to the number presented on your phone. The key thing here to note is that your device needs to be enrolled into your tenant and managed by your IT department. So in this case, that allows you to streamline the law. If that's the case, you can set up the phone signing on the app and then you actually never need, don't need to enter the password. So when you log into your tenant, you simply need to enter, like I said, your email address and then match the number. But in this case, in the push notification case, 
you actually have to enter your email address, your password, and then you get a push notification to approve or deny signing. So now that we've covered that, let's all move to the next one. So SMS is pretty um, self-explanatory. We all have used it or are using it currently for some organizations, but it's a one-time uh, one code via SMS that's delivered via SMS to your phone and you simply enter the code that's signing. This method um, can be used as a MFA method, but also self-service pass or reset method. And I'll show you um, a graphic later that you can also see that you know, not all of these method can be, methods can be used for self-service pass or reset. So some of them are only available for MFA, um, some are avail and others are available for both MFA and self-service pass or reset. I'm not a fan of SMS personally uh, because it's not that uh, secure. And so kind of I try to uh, I try to avoid the SMS option. Okay, and we can see that it's unsecure, of course, here because um, SMS and voice uh, are better than nothing, but not great. Moving on, we also have a temporary access pass, which is a time limited uh, passcode that users can use. Uh, this uh, this needs to be set up um, in in uh, here in Enter ID, uh, and here we can we can see some options so that um, the pass uh, the Temporary access pass, um, so minimum lifetime, for example, it's an hour, maximum lifetime is eight hours, um, default is one, and then one time uh, is it can be only used one time, no, and length is um, eight characters in this case. So of course, we can all change this, um, so we can we can we can change all these um, settings. Uh, this is this option is mostly used uh, mostly used at uh, when you're onboarding a new user, for example. Or for some reason, um, for them, you know, to, to log into their account for the first time and set up MFA, or it can be also, uh, you know, used for account recovery and certain situations such as those. So I'll probably do a more detailed um, video on this and how to go about setting it up and also sending it to the user. Moving on, we also have the hardware. You know, this is uh, there are physical devices. And, and uh, they have a secret key to generate their six digits codes used to authenticate. So uh, this uh, example of a, of a hardware token device is such as this, so safe ID. As you can see, it looks like kind of like a USB and then you get a passcode that you would enter um, to be able to log in. Of course, these, these um, devices would they have to be signed in, sign, uh, set up, sorry. Moving on, um, we have uh, third-party software or tokens. So as you can see, this is uh, this works the same way as Microsoft Authenticator app. So it's Google Authenticator, um, etc. But you can also use you can also use if you're using a password manager, for example, let's say one password, and um, you set up you set up uh, one password as your as your um, app. For multi-factor authentication, you can see, you can use the code that's generated there um, for signing if this is enabled, uh, and this is uh, this is a good option uh, if you prefer to use password manager um, for MFA instead of using, uh, for example, an app like Microsoft um, Authenticator like push notifications. But of course, you can use also the Microsoft Authenticator. Um, six-digit codes as well. Moving on, we're going to voice call. So uh, these authentication methods, you know, places a call to a user, which the user needs to then approve um, the using the keypad. Usually you would um, hit hash key or something, whatever it's um, depending on the service. So I think for Microsoft, it's a hash key. Um, and, you know, voice call is not usable as a first factor authentication method. So what it means that you have to, you have to use something else um, for example, the Microsoft Authenticator app and voice call. Voice call is also not very secure, so um, like we saw on the graphics, so I don't actually recommend setting setting that up. Moving on, we also have uh, email. So email OTP sends a code to the user's email address, uh, which is then used to authenticate. If we go here, the email one is really useful also um, to allow ex external users to use email OTP, 
because you want um, external users to, to be using some sort of uh, MFA, but you also don't want to make it hard for them, like you wouldn't want them to use a hardware key necessarily, or you know install an app especially for, for them to be able to access your environment. And um, you know, for so in that case, where you can do, you can um, you can target and you know you can allow email OTP um, just for just for external users. And then finally, we have the cert certificate-based authentication, which is also passwordless, uh, phishing-resistant uh, authentication that uses enterprise public key infrastructure for authentication. So an example of um, certificate uh, authentication, um, how you can actually set it up. You can set it up using Microsoft Cloud PKI, um, which uh, which kind of which you know automates the management of uh, of the certificate and. You know, this is this service is included in the uh, Microsoft Intune suite. And you know, if you go to if you search for it, um, you can see you can find more information about how the registration works, um, etc. Another example of a service that does the same thing, non Microsoft service, is this one, Scapman. So it's a cloud-based um, authentication authority, and that you know enables your 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 devices, um, intro manager device, etc., um, to sign in to your tenant. So that's a quick overview uh, of each authentication methods, a method available in Entra. And hopefully you found it helpful and it gives you a better idea of which methods are more secure and which methods you should apply in your organization. Uh, generally for me, I would say, you know, Microsoft Authenticator app is is, uh, is is definitely a must and then um, you know uh, third party software or tokens as well and probably still sms uh, for most most organizations now while we're here i'm going to also show you a few other um, settings available in this uh, authentication methods uh, page if we go to password protection what we have here is we have a um, lockout threshold so how many failed attempts signings allowed on the account before it's locked out and then uh, we have also the lockout duration so um, so in this case uh, this is set to 60 seconds uh, it's probably should probably increase this um, the default so maybe maybe something something um, longer and then here we have also um, custom band passwords so microsoft does does have uh, like a database some band, band passwords so if you try to set up something like password it's probably not going to work but you can also um, enforce a custom list and usually you can add stuff like the name of your company so for example you know my company name or something like that something that's common for your organization in particular but that wouldn't be on the microsoft um, database and we also have um, some password protection options for windows server active directory um, and we also have you know a, a option here to essentially um, uh, audit or audit um, when when band passwords are used um, to to log in or, or actually an attempted login. So I can save this here. Uh, moving on to the registration uh, campaign. So this registration campaign is kind of self-explanatory. Um, you start the registration campaign to prompt the users to set up more secure authentication methods. Um, so you have a few options here, how to do that. So we have Microsoft Manage, um, you know, ma Microsoft Manages when, if this feature is enabled. Uh, so then we have also um, days allowed to snooze. So how long can, can uh, the users snooze the notification for before they have to set up a th strong authentication MFA, strong authentication method. And then of course, uh, we can limit uh, the number of, of snoozes. Um, so we can ex target this for certain groups or you know certain users. And, um, and for example, as you can see here, include the users and groups. So authenticator is included for users. And you can't really, um, well, you can you know you can change it and only target certain users as well. So if you go to authentication uh, strengths. So we can look at some of the uh, options here. So we have pre-configured built-in authentication strengths. 
but we can also set up, you know, if you open the screen, we can configure our own authentication strengths. So for example, we can set up, um, you know, Microsoft Authenticator phone signing, obviously like, you know, the device needs to be enrolled and meet some other prerequisites um, or requirements. And then we can, you know, select, for example, uh, you know, password plus or token. And once we set, that, set this up, we can use um, conditional access policy um, to, 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 to enforce the use of the settings we have here. So we're not going to go through all that now because the video is already a bit longer than I, than I thought, but um, maybe I'll record a different video for that. And here, if you look at the settings, um, we can allow users um, to respond, uh, um, report such, uh, suspicious activities if they receive authentication re request they did not initiate. Um, so, you know, this would, you know, set the user's risk uh, profile to, to, to high and, and, you know, they, if, depending on the conditional access policies that we have set up, we can, we can target and, and say that, you know, if, if the user risk is high, that user is blocked from signing in until someone reviews the activity. And if you look at this setting here, it simply, uh, you know, shows us what the system preferred multi-factor authentication method is. And, you know, if it's Microsoft managed, uh, that means that the most secure method will be presented to users. If we go to the activity here, we can see how many users are capable of multi-factor authentication, how many users are capable of passwordless authentication, and also users who are capable of self-service password reset. And in this graph, we can see, um, you know, users, well, how many users have registered uh, which authentication method. Uh, most, many of these um, settings here, so I think require P2 enter license. So if you don't actually see them, uh, it's probably because you don't have the right licensing set up. So here in the user registration page, um, we can see all the, you know, users who have registered with multi-factor authentication and whether they are capable of self-service password reset um, and also multi-factor authentication they have registered. Here we can see events, so registration details and also reset events when the um, multi-factor authentication was reset, which can be done from the user page. So if you navigate to the individual user here on the left-hand side, um, you can require the, the re, re, re um, for them to set up um, MFA methods again. And then we can see some uh, bulk enrollment um, features here. So, bulk operation, sorry. Um, so that's, um, that, that's that. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, yeah, and stay tuned uh, for more videos on Enter ID. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel and you know hit the like button, share the video. And one last thing I want to mention is this manage migration option here. So I have already done a video on this, uh, which you can watch next, or you can just go on my channel and find it. Cool. Thank you. Until next time.